and welcome back to my channel so for today's video i'm going to be doing a comprehensive q a about the university of leeds because i know that recently a lot of the accommodation days and open days have been cancelled so i'm gonna try and supplement those is that the word supplement I don't know, I'm just going to try and give you as much information as possible from a student's perspective and as a student who has experienced University of Leeds for themselves, guaranteed I've only been there for one year so I don't have all the knowledge in the world, I can't tell you what it's like to be a final year student, a second year student yet so please bear that in mind and also in this video I'm not going to be talking through any basic information that you can find on the website such as what courses they do, tuition fees, accommodation costs because you can find that information yourself so easily and if I went through all of that in this video this video would be so many hours long. So yeah, I'm just gonna be answering questions that you can only really find out from students themselves. So this is gonna be a very opinion-based Q&A and please bear in mind that I am only one person. I only study one course. I've only lived in one accommodation. So I cannot speak for everybody. I cannot speak for all 30,000 students at the University of Leeds or however many go there. So please bear that in mind that this is all from my personal opinion and in my personal experience. So I've actually put the questions in order so I'm gonna put some timestamps down below in the description in case you've come here to only find out about accommodation or only find out about freshers and you don't want to know absolutely everything because this video, I'm not gonna lie, is probably gonna end up being really long because I want to give you as much information as I can. But I'm gonna start right at the start and the first question is why did you choose University of Leeds over other universities? So I actually actually went to so many open days for universities. I can't remember how many exactly but it was definitely nearly 10 I think and the reason that I chose University of Leeds is because out of all those open days Leeds was the one that I clicked most with. On the open day I could just really visualise myself living there, I could imagine myself studying in those buildings, I could imagine myself spending time in the union, I could imagine myself being in that city and that's how I sort of knew that it was right for me and my gut instinct was definitely right because I absolutely love Leeds if you couldn't tell and I just didn't get the same feeling with other universities. I could definitely somewhat see myself living at other universities, like I very nearly chose University of Birmingham, but there was just something about Leeds that clicked with me personally more and that is why I chose it. I also thought the business management course, oh I haven't even said that, I do business management. I also thought the business school was fab and the course looked really good so that's what kind of persuaded me. I also loved the city. I live in Nottingham currently, I'm a big city person, I always have been so I like the size of it as well and also the distance to home. It is only about an hour and a half away from Nottingham which I thought was like far enough but not too far away. <laughs> but I totally understand that you guys don't have the opportunity anymore to actually go to these places potentially before September. So I just do as much research as you can really into the universities and maybe make a pros and cons list. Look into everything. Don't just look at the university. On every open day, I made sure to drag my dad around the whole city centre, checking out the shopping centres, checking out like the main streets. Have a look at everything that you can because your life just won't be in the university, it'll also be in the city obviously, so it's good to get an overall picture of everything. But for me, the reason I chose Leeds is literally just like gut instinct <laughs> and turned out to be right, so that's okay. But. So the next thing on my list to talk about is accommodation and I've had so many questions recently about accommodation because I think this is around the time that you need to apply for the one that you like if you have firmed University of Leeds as your first choice. So obviously I have moved out of my first year halls now I'm back home so I'm okay to talk about it now because I don't live there anymore but, but I lived in a halls called Montague Burton in first year and I'd actually really recommend it it's a slightly smaller accommodation no one has really ever heard of it even when you move there <laughs> and people ask you where you live they're like 
where's that it's fab for the price like for the price you pay you get so much the flats are so nice and homely the rooms are a really spacious size as you've probably seen from my vlogs i loved my first year room i thought it was so nice but the reason that it is obviously cheaper is because it's shared bathroom and this didn't bother me at all because i'm used to sharing a bathroom at home with my family and at university it is literally no different i feel like people make a massive deal out of having an ensuite yes an ensuite is nice but then also we didn't have to clean our bathroom at university the cleaners did it for us and um, you get a bigger room because they're not having to build a bathroom in the room so there's pros and cons to each and also you save so much money by not having an ensuite so i definitely recommend when choosing your accommodation do not define it by having an ensuite or not having an ensuite maybe if you're really used to having an ensuite then yes but it's literally no different than just sharing with your family it's different in all the accommodations but in montague burton you either get a flat of four or a flat of nine and i was in a flat of four with three other girls and i absolutely loved it it was so chill it was so peaceful our flat was kept tidy because you get the bins taken out as well in montague burton and also massive selling point we have a washing machine and a dryer in the kitchen so you don't have to go through what seems to be the torture of circuit laundry because it's just in your kitchen so you don't really have to worry about it and the reason that i chose that one is because it's not oversubscribed i very nearly went for central village which i'm sure if you've done your research is probably the one that you've either seen on an open day or the main one that you've seen on the websites and stuff because it is one of the biggest ones and i nearly went for it because there's no denying that it is lovely the rooms are lovely like the actual flats are lovely but the reason i didn't go for it is because every year it's really oversubscribed which means that you can apply for it but you will potentially not get it and with the university of leeds unless it's changed this year you can only apply for one accommodation so if you don't get that one you will just be put somewhere random so it's worth looking at that as well because it's not always a good idea to go for the most popular one obviously it's great if you do get it but then if you don't get it you might end up somewhere worse which is why I went for Montague Burton because I thought it's really nice and it's not oversubscribed so I'm more likely to get it and I did end up getting it but for the most part no matter where you apply most people do get their first choice of accommodation everyone that i know got what they applied for i think apart from my friend Maeve, but that's because she applied late so yeah if you really want somewhere definitely apply on time because otherwise you will just get put somewhere where there's spaces this is also the same for other accommodations such as james bailey i know that that's a really popular one as well that people apply to and that one definitely does have a reputation for being a party place lots of people asked me which is the most sociable halls which halls would I recommend in terms of social life and obviously I can't talk about anywhere but Montague Burton and places that my friends have lived but James Bailey definitely has a reputation for a party place but that wouldn't personally suit me because I like my quiet time to myself but a massive thing that I'd bear in mind when looking at your halls is don't define it by how social they are because your social life at university as i'll talk about further in this video is very much what you make of it it doesn't matter how many social events your accommodation puts on it doesn't matter how many pre's are happening at your accommodation if you're not attending them you're not going to make friends like your social life is entirely defined by your actions if that makes sense so in that sense it really doesn't matter where you get put where you apply to in terms of accommodation because as long as you make the effort you'll have a great social life no matter where you are and even if you don't have a great social life in your accommodation it's really not the be all and end all because as i'll talk about further in this video there are so many other ways of making friends at university and getting involved in social events so So as soon as you know officially which accommodation you're in, I found out in August, I think, obviously after results day, not quite sure how it's going to work this year, if it's going to work differently or not, but as soon as you know the accommodation that you're in, they should tell you your exact room number and I'd really recommend joining the Facebook group. So there's normally a Facebook group for every single accommodation. So there was a Montague Burton Facebook group, for example, and lots of people were talking in the chat saying, oh, I'm in this room. 
I'm in this room and that way you can find your flatmates. I found my flatmates Megan and Bethan on Facebook before I'd even moved to university and this is a really good way to get to know them and also decide what you're going to do about freshers week and things like that so I'd really recommend looking for stuff on Facebook before you go to university because so much goes on and you can sort of like plan before you get there. So just before I move on to freshers, which is the next thing I'm gonna talk about, a few people asked, can you stay in halls for your full time at university? And I think the answer to that is yes, if you reapply. You can reapply as a second year student, a third year student, but for the most part, people don't generally do that. I know at places like Oxford, you do stay in halls for your whole time, but at Leeds, the norm is to get a student house for your second and your third year. That's what most people do. But if you really want to, you can stay in halls, but you have to bear in mind that you will probably be surrounded by new freshers every year. Okay, so moving on to freshers. The first question is, is it worth getting a freshers wristband? So I'm not gonna lie, I don't know a lot about the wristbands because personally, I didn't get one. As I said, I connected with Megan and Bethan beforehand and we decided that we weren't gonna get wristbands. So I'd really recommend talking to your flatmates beforehand and making a general consensus because the only thing about wristbands is they are such a lot of money and you are potentially restricting yourself. Leeds is a huge city and it has so many nightclubs. I'll talk about nightlife more later on in the video more in depth at the moment I'm just talking about freshers but there's so many clubs that you won't struggle to get in anywhere if you don't have a wristband. We didn't have wristbands and we went out pretty much every night without fail and got into the place that we wanted to go because the thing is some nights we found that we turn up to a pre's and everyone at the pre's was going to somewhere completely different than where we'd have got a ticket to so then we had to buy a ticket to that place. Obviously we didn't need to but we wanted to go where they were going so that's the only thing I'd bear in mind about wristbands. You might find that when you actually get there, everyone is going somewhere different and you've obviously paid however much money it is for a wristband to go somewhere else. So in that sense, I think it can be quite restrictive, but I just do what your flatmates are doing. If your flatmates are getting a wristband, then get one as well because then you'll definitely be going together. Okay, so now more generally, what is freshers like? So at Leeds, freshers is around a week long or it's a little bit over a week actually because it sort of starts the weekend that you get there and then ends the weekend before lectures start. I say end, you end up going out so many times for so many weeks <laughs> at the start of university, but that's when the official freshers is. And it's tiring, I'm not gonna lie. I went out almost every night, I think, and you still do have university during the day. I don't know if other places do it differently, but at University of Leeds, you still do have things on in the week in university. You don't have official lectures as such, but you do have a whole timetable of induction lectures, introductory lectures, which can be quite rough, especially if they're around like nine in the morning and you've been out the night before, but, but not a lot of them were for me so that's okay but my main piece of advice for freshers if you are going out a lot is nap at every given opportunity me and my flatmates literally had designated nap times so at 4 p.m we would all go for a nap if we were going out that evening so yeah it's tiring but it's so fun also saying that there's absolutely no pressure to go out every night as i said i went out almost every night but we didn't go out on the first night that we got to university because obviously we'd arrived that day lots of people did go out but we were all just shattered from the moving experience and also we just decided to go to this like chill mixer in the accommodation instead and then on the Wednesday or the Thursday I can't remember which day but we just invited the flat next door round for dinner instead of going out so there's really no pressure to go out every night and there's really no judgment if you don't go out I feel like there's a massive misconception that you have to go out every night of freshers otherwise you're really missing out but you're not missing out on anything because you go out so much at university anyway that it's not like you just go out in freshers and then never go out again. So 
don't worry about not missing out if you're genuinely not feeling it then don't go because i'm not gonna lie by the end of the week i was bored of it <laughs> i was putting minimal effort into going out there was no real like excitement left for me um but obviously that's just my personal experience people go out a lot more than i do i fully get that and that sort of leads on to the next question that i was going to talk about and that is is there a big pressure to drink and go out all the time and I think the answer to that is absolutely not. Lots of people don't drink at university. I feel like there's a massive misconception that everyone does, but I know quite a few people that don't and have still had a great freshers experience. There's so much more to freshers than just going out at night. There is so much on during the day. For example, there's freshers fair, there's loads of events going on in the union. Your accommodation also puts on events during the day. For example, we had a welcome barbecue, we had like an ice cream truck come. There's loads of stuff going on that doesn't involve drinking and i feel like there's a misconception because people don't talk about these as much people just tend to talk about the drinking side more it's also worth mentioning that there's a whole society at leeds dedicated to having a good time without drinking so there's literally no judgment whatsoever no judgment that i've come across if you don't want to drink there's plenty of other stuff to get involved with and you don't even have to drink when you go out at the moment my friend megan can't drink but she still comes out on every night out with us and has a really good time and it's exactly the same with drugs i know that leeds has a bit of a reputation surrounding this but it's honestly all down to your personal decisions if you don't want to do anything i have experienced no pressure to do anything and i've experienced no judgment because i don't do anything so the next question is is it hard to make friends and i think this is a very subjective question because everyone is different but i think the short answer is is no if you make the effort. With every aspect of university, you very much get out what you put into it. So if you put in a lot of effort into making friends and meeting new people, you will make friends if that makes sense like you get out what you put in so if you make the effort to go to the social events that your accommodation puts on your subject department puts on then you're gonna inevitably meet people that are like-minded and that you get along with also going to societies is a great way to make friends university is not like school in the sense that there's only really like one stream to make friends there are so many different directions that you can go in at university that allow you to meet like-minded people that i don't think this has really been a problem for anyone that i've encountered obviously if you just stay in your room the whole time and like don't talk to anyone then you're not just going to automatically make friends i think that's a misconception as well it doesn't happen automatically at university you do have to put the work in and like make the effort to introduce yourself to people but i think the humbling thing about university is that everyone is in the same boat even if they have come with someone that they know from school they're still going to want to meet new people for the most part and you get that vibe at the start of university as well because if you introduce yourself to people they're gonna want to know who you are they're gonna want to make new friends they're gonna want to sit with you in a lecture because why wouldn't they like <laughs> so you have your flatmates that you move in with as well so these are probably the first people that you're gonna meet at university but i wouldn't allow yourself to just like fall into a safety net of only spending time with them as i said make the effort to go to things like the social events that the university has put on my accommodation at the start of the year put on like a mixers drink on the first night and we went to this and this is how we met the majority of people that we know in our accommodation and university is all really a big long chain of meeting people because by meeting them you then meet their flatmates and then you might meet their flatmates friends so it's just making that first step really and then the rest will just sort of like unfold but you meet people all the time at university so I wouldn't be disheartened if like the people that you meet right at the start of university don't become your best friends and your flatmates even don't become your best friends all my friends that I'm living with next year apart from Megan who's obviously my flatmate I didn't meet in the first few weeks of university i probably met them in the first couple months yes but they definitely weren't the first people that i met and got on with and became friends with i know that it can be awkward introducing yourself but you don't always need to do it in like an awkward small talk way how i met a lot of my friends from my course is for example if i was walking to a lecture and i saw 
saw some people walking towards the same building I'd like approach them and be like oh is this where like this economics lecture is even though I knew full well that that's where the economics lecture was it's a conversation starter and then you can be like oh what's your name yeah you doing business management too so you don't always need to make it awkward by like going up and being like hi I'm Lydia for example my friend Maeve who's literally like one of my best friends at university I think the first conversation that we ever had was because I came up to her and asked where she got her acrylic nails done because I hadn't yet got mine done and I needed a salon so yeah it doesn't have to be like your conventional small talk like feel free to just ask people questions it's a great gateway into a conversation and that's how I met some of my closest friends I also got a lot of questions about concerns about fitting in like what if you don't fit in and I think I've already pretty much covered this but universities are a lot bigger than schools are University of Leeds has 30,000 students I think something like that so you are inevitably gonna find someone that is like-minded and that you get on with as I said you might not find them initially in the first couple weeks because you're not gonna meet all 30,000 students in the first seven days you probably never will meet all the students there but just keep attending things like society events accommodation events and you're inevitably gonna find someone eventually that you get on with so just be persistent with it really and keep an open mind. Okay, so that nicely leads me on to societies because I've mentioned this obviously a bit before, but yeah, at University of Leeds there are so many societies. I don't know how many exactly, but it's a big number and there is such a variety. So I joined five in first year. Not gonna lie, I only ever attended two of them, but I thought what's the harm in joining more because they didn't have high membership fees, so I thought, may as well so the two that i actually attended was the lub society which is uh the business school society so each department will have its own society which is sort of like the social side of your course and i also joined yoga society i I go on about yoga all the time I feel like so I won't go into this a lot but it basically meant that classes were cheaper if I joined a society and they also did put on some social events not that I actually went to any of them but there is that option there and then the three that I joined but never did anything with were women in leadership society cocktail society and art society Next year, I really want to do more with these, especially Art Society, so I'm going to keep my membership for that one. Not sure about Women in Leadership or Cocktail Society, although I would love to join Cocktail Society. Not sure why I never went to any of them. But anyway, my point is that there are such a variety of societies. Literally anything that you could think of, there's probably a society, although there isn't yet a hummus society, so kind of lacking in that department because I know Jack Edwards was part of Hummer Society in Durham so if anyone also goes to the University of Leeds or you're coming next year let me know if you want to set up a hummus society. <laughs> anyway, going on a bit of a tangent here, but bear in mind when joining societies that they all have different membership fees and it can add up if you join loads and loads and loads. So the membership fees really vary. For example, yoga society membership was £4 for the year, which means that you can get the classes for £2 instead of £4. So I thought economically, that's a good investment. However, Lub Society, for example, the Business School Society was about 20 or 30 pounds to join, I think. So just bear this in mind, don't join loads that are really expensive if you're never gonna actually attend them. <laughs> However, saying that you don't actually have to join any societies to get involved in activities, especially sports related stuff. I go to the gym a lot and I don't need to be in the gym society or anything like that. The Edge also does its own yoga classes and stuff so you don't necessarily need to join a yoga society for that. So the next question is, is the university diverse? Are there a lot of international students so from what I've seen I think the university is incredibly diverse and one of the most diverse ones that I've seen when I've gone round on open days and stuff there are lots of international students as well for example in first semester I had a flatmate called Akari who was Japanese she was an international student she was only there for one semester she was just there as like 
an exchange kind of student I think I don't really know how the international student thing works because obviously I have not come from within that system the whole flat next door to us as well also in first semester was international students and also in second semester a whole flat of international girls moved in so there are so many international students at Leeds which I think is so cool for example literally half of my course is international students I think so there's so many people from so many different walks of life and backgrounds which I think is so so interesting and makes the university so diverse and just a really nice cultural place to be in sort of along those lines I got a few questions asking is there a north south divide within like the UK population and I'd say not that I've ever experienced like I have friends who live in the north I've got friends who live in the south I'm in the Midlands so I don't really know where I am <laughs> but not that I've experienced no there's no like prejudice or anything from where you've originally come from that I've personally experienced and I've met a lot of people so I feel like I'd kind of know if there was Okay, the next question is, what is the nightlife like? This is inevitably a question I get asked quite a lot because Leeds has a reputation for being a bit of a party city and rightly so, I think the nightlife in Leeds is brilliant and coming from Nottingham where the nightlife is also good, it's even better than that in my personal opinion. There are so many clubs and bars in Leeds. Every week I seem to hear about one that I've never heard about before or I've never gone to. I I felt like I'd been to a lot of clubs in Leeds. Turned out I've probably been to about a third or a quarter of the ones that there are. There are so many, so you're inevitably gonna find something that you like and plays the music that you like and is the vibe that you like. So it's so good for nightlife and especially freshers and just student life in general. There's a student night on pretty much every night of the week I think like during the weekdays and there's also student nights at the weekend as well although less students tend to go out at the weekend at Leeds that's just what I found anyway I know that Beaverworks does some stuff at the weekend but for the most part you go out during the weekdays and it's really good if you were wondering my personal favorite club is Mission feel like people would not expect that from me but I feel like I don't talk a lot about nightlife or drink or drugs on my channel a lot so people are like even surprised that I go out but <laughs> there's a lot that I don't really show you but also the university union has its own club in the union which actually puts on really good nights so I'd really recommend Club Tropicana if you go to Leeds it's on about once a month and it's all like 80s tunes and like it's Hawaiian themed and there's inflatables and it's just so much fun uh, they also do Fruity Friday which I think is kind of famous a lot of people ask me about it and I don't think they even go to Leeds but yeah Fruity Friday happens every Friday, obviously. Why did I even need to explain that? In the union and loads of people go to that. Not gonna lie, I've only been to it once. So people were also asking how much do you spend on average on a night out and for me, I don't tend to spend a lot. This is the perks of being a lightweight. <laughs> but basically the tactic at university that most people apply is drink more at pre's so then you have to spend less money on drinks when you're out that's the general principle i don't know if this whole video is going to be demonetized i just thought about that but you know what this is valuable advice <laughs> obviously do not overdo it we've all been there done that and not made it past pre's and I can confirm it's not great. It's not a great experience. Don't recommend. So know your limits at pre's. <laughs> Obviously it depends where you go. Some places you go and it's like one pound shots and sometimes it'll be like five pounds for a shot. So I just bear in mind firstly where you're going. Most of the time my money on a night out will be if I've had to buy alcohol for pre's, if I've had to buy mixes. But then in a club I will buy like maximum two drinks. Like because I don't really buy drinks in the club in general. I don't like standing there with a drink. I don't think that's particularly safe. So I tend not to do it. If I do have a drink, it will normally be a shot. I feel like I'm exposing way too much about myself here, but you know what? Valuable information. And then the rest of my money will go on whatever part of the Uber fare that I owe. My friends and I are quite good at splitting Uber fares. So that's normally not too expensive because we just split it. And then normally a Mackey's. You've got to bear in mind that you're probably going to end up in Mackey's after your night out. So factor that into your night out budget. But on average, I'd say I spend maximum £30 if I've had to buy like a bottle of vodka or something. And if I haven't, then maximum like 20 
more like 15 10 pounds on a night out so you can definitely make it cheaper or more expensive based on your decisions <laughs> another question about nightlife is people were asking is it safe at night and i think this is subjective because i think safety is a lot about your own responsibility and a lot about how sensible you personally act so I'm lucky that me and my friends have never experienced anything bad on a night out because we are sensible, we stick together as a group, no one ever really wanders off on their own so nothing bad has happened as a result. So I think safety is a very subjective thing but as long as you are sensible and you are responsible you will be fine. Okay the next question is what is the campus like? So I really like the University of Leeds campus, I think it's lovely to walk around, it's got a lovely vibe to it because I feel like the location of it is perfect or I think it's nice anyway because the campus has its own little like not bubble but you know that you're on a university campus if that makes sense you're surrounded by students you're surrounded by academic buildings however if you just walk 15 minutes down the road you're into the center of Leeds it's also such a good size it probably takes you 10 to 15 minutes depending on how fast you walk to get from one end to the other of the campus so it's like big enough that you are on a campus but not too big that it takes you absolutely ages to walk anywhere it's got a really nice mix of architecture on it as well because if you look at some of the photos for example if you look at the architecture of Roger Stevens I can't remember what specific type of architecture it is I feel like it's like brutalism or something it's basically a really ugly building in my opinion but then you've got like Bane's wing that looks like it's straight out of Cambridge so I actually really like the variety on campus I think it gives it personality and I think that's probably why I liked it so much on the open day and I feel like it matches the diversity of the university really well. The student union on campus is also amazing in my personal opinion. You've got a co-op in there, you've got a bank in there, I think there's even a hairdresser's in there, you've got hump it in there. If you have not tried a hump it ever in your life and you're going to University of Leeds, get a hump it because <laughs> it sounds so weird. Basically it's just hummus and pitta, that's why it's called that. Um, <laughs> but it's amazing and yeah like my yoga classes often take place in the union there's a whole club in there we've got bars in there we've got terrace in there we've got old bar in there so yeah I think the union is really really good in comparison to other universities that I've been to you've also got the edge on campus as well which is the fitness place so it's got a really good gym it's got a swimming pool in there it's where fitness classes take place so yeah I think the campus overall has got everything that you need on it so the next question is what is the teaching like at university and this is one that I can't comment on overall really because obviously I only do one course. I'm going to do another video specifically answering questions that you guys might have about business management at Leeds but I don't really want to talk about this a lot in this video because it's not relevant to everyone but overall I think the teaching quality is really high. Obviously it's a Russell group so that reflects their teaching standard a lot but at university you have different teaching styles so you've got your lectures which are the big lecture theatres that might have like 200 300 500 students in them but then you've also got seminars that are like your typical classroom setup with a teacher at the front and it's interactive then you also might have workshops that are around like 100 students or so and that's interactive but also it's like a mix between a lecture and a seminar basically um, and then also you do have personal tutorials with your personal tutor. Once again the contact hours vary completely as well for different courses. For me in first semester I had between 10 and 12 contact hours. Contact hours are when you're actually being taught and like the hours that are on your timetable but in second semester I only had eight but then it's completely different for different courses. For example Megan does maths at University of Leeds and she has so many more contact hours than me, literally like double. Okay, the next question is, what is support like at university in terms of mental health and any other issues that you've had? So I don't know a lot about this personally. There is a whole in-university mental health support system. I did apply for it, 
but because of covid and everything i didn't actually like do anything with it i just sent my application in so i can't really talk a lot about it but they do have a whole system that you can go through and get different help if you do need help there's a whole welfare officer in the student union that you can talk to about these things and there's a lot there's a lot like there's a whole twitter page that i think you can follow that will tell you more about this because i haven't looked into it in a lot of depth but I know that there is a lot there if you do need it. Okay, the next question is, what is the city like? So I think this is really down to personal preference because as I said earlier, I'm a big city person. I like being in a city, whereas I know that other people don't. So I can only really talk from my personal preference here about it, but I love Leeds as a city. Coming from Nottingham, it's a nice change. I think for a city, Leeds is really, really nice. It's got everything that you need. It's got such a good variety of shops, restaurants, cafes. It's got everything that you need there. I also think it's a really nice size because it's big, but after a few months, you will just know your way around and know where to go. So it's easy to navigate. The whole city centre as well is mainly pedestrian, which I think is really nice because you can really leisurely walk around and, you know, not have to worry about being run over um, or traffic or anything. So I think it's just got a nice vibe to it. It's also, as I said, great for shopping if that's one of your priorities. It's got loads of restaurants, loads of cafes. Some of my personal recommendations would be Trinity Kitchen which is in Trinity which is a big shopping centre that is so nice it's like a big food court and the food there is incredible also LS6 Cafe that's more up the other way near Headingley such a nice place for brunch Bakery 164 is a University of Leeds essential if you come to University of Leeds you need to know about Bakery 164 because it's incredible. Also places in the center like Almost Famous Burgers is nice, Gusto for Italian food. There are so many nice places that I've been in the center of Leeds and so many more that I want to go to. So in terms of prices, living in Leeds is definitely not the cheapest place that you could live, but it's also definitely not the most expensive. I did a whole video talking about how much I spend in a week at university, so I'd recommend going and watching that. That gives you more of an idea about like shopping prices, like food shop prices, eating out, all that kind of vibe. So definitely go and watch that. I'll have that link down below in the description as well. Sort of following on from that as well, the last question that I'm gonna answer because I've waffled on for about 45 minutes now is <laughs> can you go out at the weekend? Are there green places around Leeds? Is it a green city? And I think this is one of the best things about Leeds is that as much as I love being in a city, you can drive for about 20 minutes and you will be in like Yorkshire countryside, which is really nice me and max go out a lot to the countryside and go on walks around parks and stuff because he's not a city person so he likes to do things outside of the city center so yeah there's definitely ways that you can get out the city and get into green spaces there are lots of parks within the city as well that you can go to so yeah there's definitely that option there as well if you don't drive i think there's definitely buses that you could get but if you're really into the outdoors there's societies that you can join as well that will take you somewhere and you can climb up rocks or go hiking you can really tell that i'm not really a countryside person can't you <laughs> but yeah there's always that option there which i think is really nice anyway i have waffled for so long now but i hope that this has been somewhat helpful in terms of anything that you wanted to know about leads i'm sorry that this has been such a long video but as i said i wanted this to be comprehensive i wanted to tell you everything that i know from my personal experience of being there for a year so i hope this has helped and if it has make sure to give the video a like so subscribe to my channel for lots of University of Leeds content. I've vlogged almost my entire first year of university so go there to see what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis and also make sure to follow my social media which will be linked down below in the description. Bye guys!